Hey everyone, it's Kelly here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for a midweek video. A few videos back I asked if you wanted to see some midweek videos where I showed you some of my soap prep work and most of you said that yes, you would love to see them. So today I'm taking you along as I make the embeds for Saturday soap. Saturday soap, I want to feature some soap crystals on the top. So we're going to go and have a bit of a play with some melt and pour and see if we can make some soap crystals. Let's go. So the first thing I'm going to do to make these crystals is I'm going to cut up some melt and pour. Now I like to use the Stevenson's uh, melt and pour base and this is the no sweat clear and they also do a white no sweat and that's not to be confused with the low sweat. With the no sweat I found that I can leave my soap sitting on the curing rack for that sort of four to six week time frame and I have absolutely no issues with them sweating at all. I can even leave bits of this soap sitting on the side while I go and do lunch and that sort of thing and again it doesn't sweat so I really really like this particular um, base from Stevenson's. What I'm going to do is just chop this up into cubes. Some of these have already been sliced up because I like to just have slices so I can pull them out the container when I need little bits but I'm just going to chop up about half of the container so about a kilo and I'm going to cut them up into little cubes, pop them into my Pyrex jug and then I'm going to melt it down very gently in the microwave in short 20 to 30 second bursts. You want to make sure that you're not overheating melt and pour um, and you know you've overheated it when it's actually bubbling when you pull it out the microwave and you can smell that it's just not any good anymore and it sets really funny so always do it in short 20 to 30 second bursts and just melt it down nice and slowly. Okay, so I've been melting this down for about two minutes now. And I do still have some clumps in here, but I can feel that the jar is quite warm. So I'm just gonna give this a bit of a stir first and see if some of the residual heat from the glass can actually melt that soap down, just so we don't end up overheating it. So there was enough heat in that jug just to melt down those few extra bits in there. What I'm going to do first of all is I have got some Blizzard Mica from my Mica Obsession and just so that my little gemstones have a little bit of glistening sort of effect to them, I'm going to add just a little bit in there. Just enough to give that sort of glittery shine from the mica, but I don't want to colour it white because I'm going to stir that in gently. Make sure when you are um, stirring your melt and pour not to get too vigorous with it, otherwise you do get lots of bubbles in there which can really affect the sort of look, especially if you're building a scene within your soap. So I'm using these square moulds today, but you can really use any shape mould that you want because we end up cutting the soap quite a bit. What I'm going to do, I'm aiming to make at least five of these cubes. So I'm going to start off with five and if I have any more soap left over, I'll just um, melt it down again if needs be and then do a couple more. Either that or I'll leave the extra soap to one side for later projects. So for now, I'm just pouring in probably about half a centimetre of um, the soap base in there. I'm just going to grab myself a skewer. I have some liquid soap colours here and all I'm going to do is just get a few different colours kind of complement themselves. So I've got this citrus orange and I've got yellow and these are from Aussie Soap Supplies. What I'm going to do in each of these cavities is I'm just going to put just a couple of little drops of colour, not too much. I have um, kind of had a play with this earlier and that was something I did learn is that you don't want too much colour in them otherwise it, because of the way that we do them, um, you may end up with um, colour that doesn't mix through the soap and actually ends up staining. So I'm going to put a little bit of those. In this one we're going to go, I've got a violet from Heirloom Bath and Body, so I'm just going to put a couple of drops in this one. And I'm going to put maybe a little bit of green in with this one as well. And this is Deep Sea from Aussie Soap Supplies. And just while this soap here is still warm, 
I'm just then going to end up pouring it on the top so it moves all that dye around. The idea is that you kind of get a marbled effect through it but not too much solid colour either. Some of the ones that I've seen when looking around, they're just really pretty. And there's lots of different ways of actually creating these effects as well. This was just the one effect that I found was going to be easiest for me. I'm just going to break the top off that bit of soap. Just pop it over there for now. This is Malibu Pink. This one goes actually quite a bright pink. So I'm only going to put a few drops of that one in there and then I might mix that in with a little bit of a purple so we'll go for royal purple with that pink that one's definitely going to need a little bit of help from the skewer you don't want any of these sort of really big blobs of ink in of not ink it's soap dye because if you've got any of the really big blobs as you get to those soaps they will stain the skin that one I think is going to be really pretty and then for the final one we might do a bit of orange actually no we won't we'll do some purple and some red so I actually might use some of the royal purple but we'll get that bit off the top of there and all these little bits I'm just scooting off to the side there they can just be put either into a scrap bucket for the next time I'm using a clear um, melt and pour I can pop them into and melt them down again oops we almost went Malibu pink there I actually want red which is this carmine so that's the beauty with melt and pour is you never really waste any of it and just give that a stir again it's still nice and warm I'm going to pour that in to stir all that up and give that a bit of a stir as well just to make sure we don't have any of the clumps of dye And I'm not going to bother spraying with any alcohol or anything because we will be trimming these down so the actual um, bubbles don't really matter. But if you are too bothered about them, of course, give them a spray with some alcohol. What I'm going to do now is just leave this um, sit here for probably about 20 minutes until it hardens up and then we'll come back and start making our crystals. Okay, so these have now been sitting here and they're ready to unmold. Now, I am a little bit concerned about these. So the way I've made these is the way that I saw um, lots of other people making them on YouTube land and I was a bit concerned that the dye would actually pull and would then actually become when you cut them got down to certain points you just get dye all over your hands and I'm pretty sure that that is what's going to happen here what I'm going to do with this block here is just cut it up to see what happens and just to see if that is something that I do need to watch because the last thing I want is for someone to use soap and then end up getting dye all over them this one is looking okay so I might just cut that one up as well so I actually can't see any there's a little bit here where it's really quite dark so what I might just do there is trim that off like so so then I've got just a nice piece of soap there that um, doesn't have any big blobs of soap. Now the reason I thought this was going to be an issue is because I did actually make some of these the other day to make sure that it worked. I saw, the one I originally saw, they actually filled the mould up, put some dye in and then mixed it through and let it set. And I did end up with this issue where I had globs of, um, of ink in, or dye in there and I remelted it down to make myself some more. So I'm going to keep taking them out. If they appear to be okay, we'll keep going. If not, I am actually going to melt them down. See this one here, you can see that real sheen. If I run my finger along there, you can actually see that blue ink is going to come out. And as I said, I don't want my customers to get this on them. So if you are looking to make gemstones, this is probably not the best way of getting the colours. We'll see. It appears that it is just 
on the very bottom so I'm actually going to keep these scraps so I'll actually melt that down and it should disperse that um, dye nicely through all of the soap so I have got a little bit of a globule of dye in there so we might just trim that little bit out and then we're okay So that's the thing, you, you do see lots of ideas and that on YouTube. Some of them are brilliant and work really well. And some of these you see on Pinterest as well. They work really well, but then you do have others where you just have to be very aware that um, there may be issues such as having the dye not dispersed. So I'm happy with that pink one. I'll just grab this blue one out. And again, I can see we've got lots of dye sitting in the bottom here and I don't want people getting that all over them so I'm just trimming the back of that off and then you can see we've got nice clear soap there with no sort of um, clumps of that dye in there to get on people as I said I'll just melt all these scrap bits down and make some more as well so I'll pull this yellow one out the yellow one's not too bad I did just get a whole piece on me from the edge so we'll trim the edge off there and I'm going to trim the bottom off and then that one should also be all right so it's not as bad as I'm thinking and I'll use these bits of scraps as I said to make some more soap so I'll just pop that off to the side what I'm going to do wipe up this die so that I don't end up with it all over everything to make my crystals I am going to take it doesn't really matter which piece and um, I want them to be quite small for the tops of my soap so I want them to be less than that inch so my um, soap cutter will go through and I don't want them too deep either so I'm just cutting each of my cubes up into or each of my squares up into four little rectangles I'm then just going to stand it on end and I'm using my knife is sharp something I have learned over the years is that you are far better to cut yourself with a sharp knife than a blunt knife so always make sure your knives are nice and sharp when you're doing this sort of thing and all I'm now going to do and I'm just going to throw my scraps into these squares because we can melt them down again later I am just taking my knife running it at an angle and just making some little facets along the face of this soap some of them are going to be long some of them are going to be short and I'm just going to do this randomly until I end up with a shape that I'm happy with that will go on the top of my soap so I'll just do a few more on this one and then I'll bring it up so you can have a look just trying to get it to look as randomly natural as you possibly can um, and always when you're doing this cut away from yourself never hold it like that um, I've done silly things like that in the past and I have a few really nice scars to show for it so make sure you put your soap down on the side and just move your knife down in the direction I'm pretty happy with that so we've got this bit, bit of soap that kind of has all those facets that a gemstone would have going to go for this piece this has got some of the orange in it as well and we're just going to again I'm starting with sort of the four corners and just chopping them off some I'm doing and making sure that I'm putting my knife at different angles as well so we get lots of different sort of um, shapes and then I'm just going back over it again and cutting some of those um, sort of harsh sort of lines and that's how we get lots of different facets on here so this one here you can see we've got bits of orange through there as well which just gives it that little bit of extra which is why I tried doing the colors the way that I did because I wanted them to kind of have that sort of transparent sort of look with various colors through them and you can actually see a little bit of shine from off the blizzard mica that we put in there too grab this one here so you know how I said I wasn't bothered about spraying those bubbles off that's because most of them we're going to end up chopping off when we start making all the faces on our gemstones so I've done my four and now I'm just going to go around and just cut that little bit extra off just to add a few other faces to our stones 
the tops so that the first time I tried doing this I kept trying to get really pointy tops and I just kept getting smaller and smaller pieces so you don't have to have a pointy top on the top of your gemstones um, most of them will end up being quite flat so you can see on here there's the the top I ha kind of had to really let go of that image of having a nice pointy crystal coming out of the soap which probably wouldn't be very good for wrapping it or if people are using it you don't want it to be um, poking them I'm just going to trim that little bit off as well because there was a looks quite thick with color and there is another one So this pink one, I probably it's really really pretty, but I probably actually didn't pour it quite deep enough in the mold, and also having to chop that little bit off the end, so it's making it a little bit harder to get a really nice shaped gemstone. But it will still do for what we're actually doing with this soap. I'm just going to keep going here. So there's probably a few other easier ways of actually colouring your melt and pour. If you're really good at swirling melt and pour, you can maybe try colouring it that way. Otherwise, you may have to just actually settle for having one colour in your gemstones rather than a mix of a few. Um, it's definitely been a bit of a learning curve for me, and it is actually turning out a lot better than I was at first thinking as I was watching it set. Um, so it's not going to be, I thought I was going to have to just melt them all down and re-pour and not get those really sort of pretty patterns through, which is what I had to do with the original gemstones I tried making, but they are actually coming up quite good. You can see, so this is one of the ones we just made there, which is, so just to show you the difference, so this is the one that we've made where I've put those dots in. These were the original ones I made where I followed another set of instructions and it didn't work. So I melted it down and just re-poured it. And you can see it's a lot darker in colour. By actually dropping your colour in and swirling it through, you get that more translucent sort of look from it. So I really like the look of that. It's just got that bit of a risk um, in it in terms of whether or not you'll end up with little dye pockets. But I'm pretty sure we've got them all out. So they should be nice and safe to use in the soap. So, Alright, so for now I'm just going to keep going through chopping up the remaining of these crystals ready for Saturday soap. If you've enjoyed watching me learn how to make these, um, these crystal soaps, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And if you've got any questions, I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you're interested to see what Saturday's video is going to be, why not subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell sign. And it will let you know when I upload the next video. So until Saturday, have a great week. Bye.